Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Astrology Outlook for the month of December. Now this is the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of December. So if you don't know your Sidereal Vedic Astrology signs, then what you can do is you can click a link in the description below and you'll be able to find that out. And you will discover that perhaps maybe one or two of your signs might even be the same, but uh, typically the signs do shift a little bit so you will be a little bit different in the sidereal Vedic astrology system. Now before I get into the news for this month I just wanted to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining this growing community. We have passed the 5,000 mark. I'm so amazed. It's so cool. I started this channel originally with just three friends whom I told about this channel and I said, hey, could you subscribe? You know, I'm new to this. I don't know what I'm doing. And from there it's grown. And I was thinking that when we reach the 10,000 mark, we should definitely do something to celebrate. I don't know what we'll do. I don't know when I'll get there. Uh, and I have no idea where I'm going to be. <laughs> so who knows what that's going to be like. But I'm excited anyway to keep going and to hopefully reach that point at some stage so but I did want to welcome everybody you'll find this to be a really lovely place it is full of really creative people artists musicians healers light workers counselors guides visionaries we've got the most amazing people turning up to this channel and you guys make it amazing you really do I'm always blown away in the comments section by how incredibly loving and polite and considerate everyone is and people are kind to each other i find that you guys help each other out in the comments you know if i'm not able to answer someone straight away one of you will jump in and help out and there are really lovely conversations that go on you know with all of you together in the comments below and i just love that so much so thank you to everyone who makes this such a wonderful place to be and I just love making content for you guys you are an incredible audience you inspire me you teach me as well you know when I read some of the comments and yeah I'm pinning things that you guys say because you know there is so much knowledge out there and you know you guys really know your stuff and I want to thank you for everyone who's shared their insights and knowledge with me you know because I learn a lot all the time from you guys so yeah I'm just loving doing this work I can't be happier uh, I feel really lucky that I'm doing this and that I get to keep doing it and long may it continue so yeah now before I get into the news for this month I've got my notes on my laptop here and we're going to get in and we're going to take a look at what's coming but I also wanted to say please sign up for the newsletter and what I'll do is I'll put a visual by my side so you, you'll be able to see where to go on the website all you have to do is scroll down to the bottom of the home page and there'll be a box you just type in your email address you don't even have to put a name or any of that just the email address and you will receive a quarterly email and in that quarterly email what I do is I sum up the astrology for the quarter ahead this time I will be doing a yearly outlook so I'm going to try and summarize the entire year in about a, a sort of meaty paragraph of text that's about you know how much I write per sign so that will be in your inbox I'm thinking 1st of January yeah, 1st of January. So in this episode, what I'm going to cover is really I'm just going to be talking about the solar eclipse uh, in the introduction of this video. I don't have anything too prepared this time. For me, it kind of feels like the last day of school. And yeah, I, I don't have a news matchup or any of that. I have been checking on alternative media now and then. I've been keeping an eye on the protests. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go to the protest that happened on Saturday uh, here in Sydney but I watched whatever I could on the live feed from home here so yeah it's amazing amazing times we're going through and I do think we're turning a corner I have heard that next year is going to be about healing more than anything else I think that's quite true uh, but let's take a look and see what we have going on here in terms of sidereal Vedic astrology. So we have got a total solar eclipse 
happening on the 4th of December. Now that's going to be in Scorpio in Jeshta Nakshatra. So this is pretty big. This is Scorpio. Okay, this is that hidden energy where we don't know what's going on. We would like to know what's going on, but we don't always know what is going on. We also have Jesh, the nakshatra here. Now Jesh, that is the nakshatra of eminence. This is a king making part of the, you know, the nakshatra system, if ever there was one. You know, this is ruled by Indra, the king of the gods, and it's a pretty amazing nakshatra. This is also the nakshatra where we go from being quite material. I think, you know, we've reached a place where, yes, we're, we're okay with the material world, but now we want to become spiritual. We really want to accelerate that journey. I think this is the point where we really want to accelerate our journey into the spiritual. Now, this is a solar eclipse. So what is a solar eclipse? How is that different to a lunar eclipse? Well, one of the ways that I have learnt to read a solar eclipse is to read it that this is a time where we can be jumped forward on our path. Okay, so you know, with the eclipse, I always do this with my hands and I always say something could be eclipsed out of your life, something could go. And we had that happen. The example that I'm thinking of right now, and I talked about this, I think it was last year or whenever it was, with Harry and Meghan Markle being eclipsed out of the royal family. You know, they left the royal family on an eclipse. It was pretty incredible. So how does that work with a solar eclipse where you are being jumped forward? Well, yes, you are being jumped forward. And in that instance, perhaps you might be leaving behind some people who are inappropriate or they're not going to make the cut or they're not going to be able to make the journey with you. That can happen in a solar eclipse as well. You're being jumped forward and I say forward but in a, in a different direction maybe. You know, and, and this is a time of a lot of course correcting. A lot of people are going to have their courses corrected at this time. If you left a path that you should have been on, maybe you'll be jumped onto it. This is, a, this is a time where jumping can happen, okay? So it's pretty incredible. And if your life is quite stable and established and all of that, you don't have anything to worry about, this can impact you in areas of your life where perhaps commitments haven't been made or things are unsure. We've got Scorpio here, it's a lot hidden. Okay, so if things, things are very hidden or you don't know, or this can be a very confusing time as well. This can be a tricky time to navigate, especially because this is happening in Scorpio. Okay, we can't quite see what's going on. So it's gonna, a lot of trust is gonna be required. And I would say, yeah, patience and trust, definitely. Um, I've got the note here, keep doing your spiritual practices and pray that you take only the best with you into the future, okay? Uh, I've also got a note here that this is wild card energy. Yeah, anything can happen. It's, it's really interesting. So we have the eighth house, Scorpio. We've got, do you know, we've got the Lord of Scorpio, Mars, in Libra. So that is indicating to me that desire energy is going to be really high. Uh, yeah, and I think because Mars is in Libra, I do think that this can be touching your marriage, your relationship. This can be touching, you know, partner, extended family, shared assets, those kind of things. We've also got the Lord of Jesh, the Mercury, in the house of the eclipse as well. Okay, so that is kind of indicating to me that I think you'll want to be logical at this time. I do think, I think Mars is gonna, the, the desire energy is gonna be running high because of Mars, but with Mercury being in the house, I kind of think I'm, I'm leaning towards let logic lead you through. This is not a time for rose-colored glasses. I think this is a time for feet on the ground, being practical, being logical, okay, being real, seeing things clearly, assessing things clearly. We've got the water of Scorpio here and we've got the fire of the sun. 
Okay, so another thing I'm going to say is that there can be a burn up of karma. There can even be a Gandanta like effect that happens at this time. The undoing of a karmic knot is possible here. Okay, so I'm not saying that the degrees are certainly not, it, there's no Gandanta here. I, I checked all of that. That's not it. But because of the fire and water elements, I am saying that there can be some Gandanta-like effects. Uh, and, and some of you will, yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting a sense that you know, there could be some karmic things equally. Uh, some of you will emerge, some of you will rise, some of you will be seen. This can be a really, really good thing as well. It's, it's to be observed, observe closely and see how it plays out for you. Okay, and do look, you know, a few days uh, either side of the eclipse and definitely the next few months you're going to want to observe and you know perhaps in six months time you'll be able to look back and see even more clearly what it was that got left behind uh, or what came with you on the journey okay now another thing I wanted to mention before I get into each sign is to say that I won't be doing pick a card for the next couple of weeks and the reason is because there is just too much energy. I don't know what it is, but for me, I feel like uh, I don't want to be doing the pick a card thing right now. There is so much in flux and I kind of feel like I don't want to be touching anybody's free will. That was the thing I got guided to say. Make sure you tell people that I don't want to be touching people's free will. That's with the short term immediate energies of pick a card. If you have booked me for a reading, don't you worry at all. You're going to have a really good experience. In fact, I'm going to have more time to devote to you as well. So you've booked at a perfect time for a reading. So that's absolutely fine. But this is just the kind of random, you know, energies. Um, yeah, me working with the collective group in that way. It, it just feels like... I shouldn't be doing that so I won't be uh, until I've got on my screen here the 9th of December 9th 10th of December there will be another pick card I will be back with that so yeah now what am I going to cover in the mini reports for the month well I'll tell you I'm going to cover the eclipse per sign I'm going to cover Jupiter's movement into Aquarius we've got Venus moving into Capricorn and we have a beautiful full moon in Gemini, Rikshira Nakshatra. So I'll be covering that for every single sign. And yeah, you're welcome to join me through the whole zodiac. We're going to cover everybody's sign right now. Why don't we welcome, oh my goodness, look at that, 13 minutes. This has been a very brief introduction, hasn't it? But that's okay. I didn't want to cover the news. I don't know. I just look at me I'm not doing the pick of cards and I'm not covering the news and it does feel like the last day of school it just feels like uh, yeah I, I I should steer clear of some things for now I don't know that's my guidance all right let's take a look at Aries Aries welcome thank you so much for joining we are going to take a look at the eclipse energy for you so this eclipse is happening on the 4th of December it's going to be happening in your eighth house so for you this could be affecting your family life your extended family your in-laws your marriage any shared assets some of these things could come into focus at this time and the note i have for you is look for the lifting of a burden in these areas that could be possible you might come through this time feeling lighter and easier so for you i'm sensing that yeah I, I think this could be a good eclipse for you now we've got jupiter moving into aquarius and jupiter is going to be in aquarius for the next few months so this is quite long this is going to be happening in your 11th house oh this is beautiful this is so good this is great for opportunities this is great for expanding your network great for bringing in more money 
Definitely great. Hopefully you've got good energy and you've got great energy to put into your projects. Great for social media, great for attracting followers, building your profile, uh, great time to get a new job, all this kind of thing. Great time to possibly even take a step up in your career. For that, I have some techniques where I'd probably want to see your chart actually, but uh, this is really nice energy. Jupiter in the 11th, this is great. Now you've got Venus on the 9th of December. Venus is moving into Capricorn in your 10th house. So that's for the entire month. And it's really quite interesting. So she goes into Capricorn for the entire month and then she goes back into Sagittarius, isn't it? Yeah. So this actually isn't the best energy for your love life when she goes into Capricorn in the 10th house. This, yeah, this is not quite ideal, but it's good for work because Saturn is there and he'll be very happy to see Venus. He'll be like, oh, Venus, fantastic. Let's do some great work. You can, you know, make, make the work look more beautiful or something. So yeah, it's not the best energy for your love life, but it's great for your work. So you may want to focus more on work, when it comes to Venus. Now the full moon is happening for you on the 19th of December. This is in Gemini Mrigshira Nakshatra in the third house. This is a big, beautiful, bright, chatty full moon. Okay, this is good for socializing. If you are able to meet with friends and socialize and have a nice time you know um, especially if you're feeling a bit mentally restless i know gemini mrigshira the mind can be a little bit restless so yes this is the deer that seeks beauty all that kind of thing but yeah mind wise there can be a restlessness here you might even feel a little bit indecisive or something like that but this is a full moon so we're really looking at what's culminating uh, and there could be something culminating in your friendship circle. You know, maybe something is coming to completion when it comes to your friends. And maybe, I mean, this could be that you have outgrown some friends. Maybe you do want to assess your friendship group and see, and we do have this solar eclipse happening uh, in your eighth house. I mean, yeah, this is a time of reassessing. This is definitely a time of reassessing people in your life. So do, do look at your friendship circle around the 19th of December. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to, you know, cut anyone out. It doesn't have to be dramatic, but just acknowledge your own feelings. Just, yeah, be in touch with and conscious of your true feelings for the people around you. I think that would be worthwhile on the 19th of December. But Aries, that is what we have for you. It's looking like a pretty good month. Observe, see how it plays out for you. And we are now gonna welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Sorry, I just wanted to fix my hair there. There we go, okay. Now, on the 4th of December, we have an eclipse happening in your seventh house. Okay, this is interesting. This eclipse is going to bring some things into focus it's going to bring your partner into focus if you're married your business partner or your business if you're a self-employed person and when we're looking at the lordships this could even be how you seek love and affection that could be the thing that's coming into focus here so there is change coming in these areas now Jupiter is for the next few months going to be in Aquarius in your 10th house. This is a long transit, pretty sure it's right through to April of next year, something like that. So this is good for work, but it's not the best for work. Okay, work will be in focus. I think that's how I'm going to say that. And I've got the note here, resist any temptations to be a know-it-all at work. <laughs> there is no delicate way of putting that. Look, this, this is Professor in the 10th house energy. There can be a feeling that, you know, I, yeah, I, I know, you know, uh, you want to be a bit humble with this transit. Sometimes Jupiter in the 10th, people, 
they and I love them and I know many of them and yeah they can they can be it's the professor in the tent they know everything you know even when sometimes they don't know everything so yeah resist any temptations to be a know-it-all at work work will be better for you May June next year okay um, this is a good time to be humble to put your head down to learn okay to learn what it is you're gonna need career-wise going forward invest your energy that way that'll be much better to to put that Jupiter energy to work learning you can really skill up here and maybe you could find a mentor at work actually that's another way of channeling this this beautiful Jupiter uh, in the tenth house type energy this would be a good time to find a mentor now Venus Venus on the 9th of December she is going to move into Capricorn in your ninth house now she's going to be there for the entire month until about the 30th of December and this is really nice this is good energy this is great energy for love and romance this is good energy for finding a new guru maybe you want to expand spiritually maybe there's a workshop you want to try or you know there'll be some opportunity to to find a new guru to meet someone that you can really learn from and I always find I'm amazed at how I, I don't even need this transit I, I keep finding people to learn from this just happens in my life all the time but you've got a really nice transit to find someone that maybe you're gonna learn from for a very long time yeah I've got the note here you may find new inspirational teachers that you're just absolutely going to fall in love with at this time that's beautiful there is a full moon happening on the 19th of December and that's in Gemini Mrigshir and Nakshatra this is happening for you in your second house so something's going to culminate in connection with your family or even with extended family as well and this could be a time that maybe if you've got a lot to say to a family member maybe you want to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with somebody this could be a good time if the conversation is going to have some fullness some you know maybe you want to sit down and really talk with someone and say look I, you know I, ne I never was able to express this to you before but it's really important I really want to do this I really have to talk to you there could be that some of that energy present here this this could be a good time to express the fullness of your feelings to someone in your family yeah I've got the note here great time to communicate with family definitely yeah this this could be an amazing time to 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 be close to be close to family extended family even in-laws anything like that or people you consider family close friends whom you just absolutely love and you consider them your family you know and maybe this is a time to tell them that if you haven't spoken to them for a while so Taurus this is really nice energy this is quite good uh, don't worry about the know-it-all comment I made earlier with Jupiter I, I just realized I just kind of read that word for it and I was like whoops maybe maybe I said the wrong thing there no but you know what I mean like yeah that's that's Jupiter but it, the Jupiter energy there in the 10th that that can be good so see how you get on this month Taurus and we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining now on the 4th of December there is an eclipse happening in your sixth house this is a very work focused eclipse for you there could be some big changes at work there could be some big changes in the way that you serve other people in the way that you compete with people around you this could also this could also be changes just in your actual work environment the place where you work something might change there now we've got Jupiter moving into Aquarius in the ninth house for you and Jupiter is going to be there for a few months so this is a really long transit and this is an excellent transit I'm so happy for you Gemini you have got a good transit here this is a great transit so this is an excellent time to expand your intellect okay you can master new systems 
you can read great and classic texts. I think maybe you'll be able to take in a lot of information. So this is going to be a great time for you to learn, to take career related courses, to read all the books that maybe you bought ages ago and they're on the shelf and you haven't read them yet. You know, um, great time to skill up mentally. This could also be a time where you are teaching people. This could also be a time where you are finding incredible mentors and gurus, people who can really teach you. Okay, so if there's something that you want to learn, something that might take a few months to learn, you know, it's a great time to be learning astrology or deepening your astrology studies, for example. So a lot of great energy for you there. Now on the 9th of December, Venus moves into Capricorn. And that for you is in your eighth house. Sorry, I've got my phone there. I don't know if you could hear that. Uh, 9th December, Venus moves into Capricorn. That's in your eighth house. So this is really great for love and romance, actually, because Gemini, you would have had Venus not so well placed for love and romance over the last, I would say, couple of months, probably because uh, now she's moving into the 8th. So you're going to have a nice burst until about the 30th of December. You're going to have a lovely burst of you know, Venus being in a great place for love and romance. So enjoy that. But then Venus is going to dip back into the 7th house in January through to the end of Feb. Yeah, I think it's quite a while actually uh, that she dips back into that seventh house and it's not so good. So what I'm saying is enjoy December, okay? You're gonna have some nice, romantic, beautiful, loving energy with your partner across the month of December. Enjoy that, okay? Because yeah, she's gonna do a retrograde and you won't have that energy for a little while, okay? Now we've got the full moon happening on the 19th of December. That's Gemini, Mriksha and Nakshatra in your first house. So this is your full moon, Gemini. This is, this is all about you. So you can see some pretty big cycles come to completion at these, this time. And these cycles could be in relation to your work, to your relationships, to your sense of self, you know, who you are as a person. Perhaps this will be a time on the 19th of December where you'll be able to look back and you'll be able to see how much you've grown. Maybe you'll be able to see, gosh, I really have come some way. You know, if you compare yourself to a year ago, to two years ago, three years ago, you'll be able to see the fullness, you know, the things that you have completed on, the things that you have done. That's going to be really visible at this time. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, there is an eclipse happening on the 4th of December. And for you, this is happening in your fifth house. So this could be to do with romantic partnerships. This could be to do with your children or your creativity. So the concepts of home and love are both going to be highlighted and worked through at this time. Now Jupiter is going to be in Aquarius in your eighth house. So he's going to be there for the next few months. This is quite a long transit and this can bring up arguments in relation to shared assets or extended family members. It might make you work harder. Okay, so because of Jupiter's position, you might find that it's harder to get ahead at work, harder to complete your projects or get stuff done. Life might feel like a bit of a drag. Uh, and I've got the note here, take care of your health. If, if it does feel like a bit of a drag, you can blame Jupiter. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, now Venus, on the 9th of December, Venus moves into Capricorn in your seventh house. This is not the best energy for love, Cancer. Um, there are better transits for love at the end of March, April of next year. I've, I kind of clicked ahead on your, you know what Cancer, I'm actually going to spend a little bit of time with you because I got some interesting messages. I might even draw a card or two. Hold on. I want to see when this love life thing improves for you because it's not looking too good. Uh, okay, so she's moving into Capricorn, then she moves 
back and then oh and then I see okay that's why it's so long all right because she's got to go through the seventh house again I see yes kind of March April is the next best time for love for you so that is a little bit far away isn't it um, I've got the note here go slowly in matters of love ask for guidance you'll be shown what to do okay now there's a full moon happening on the 19th of December Gemini Mrigshira Nakshatra in your 12th house yes this is what made me think all right I have to spend more time with the Cancerians and I even have a message uh, on my phone which I'm going to read out because I there was a post that came up on Instagram today and I thought I better I have to read this out for someone in this group in particular so there's this beautiful dreamy full moon that's happening it's an emotional full moon for you your mind will be restless I've got the note here try to enjoy heady heights they'll connect you with the all is one at this time and I also have the unusual note here that God wants you yeah I, I think God does want you um, when I was writing the notes for this I shuffled some cards and I got some guidance that there's somebody in this group and you're the only group this time that I'm doing this for in fact why don't I well let me read the message first okay so this was the post that was on Instagram that I just thought well I better read this out because I feel guided to do so it says here you don't ever have to feel guilty about letting people go from your life it doesn't matter whether someone is a relative romantic interest employer childhood friend or new acquaintance you don't have to make room for people who cause you pain or make you feel small or even unwanted it's one thing if a person owns up to their behavior and makes an effort to change but if a person disregards your feelings ignores your boundaries and continues to treat you in a harmful way they need to go okay so somebody in this group needs that and I thought we might as well shuffle and see what comes up because when I when I was writing your one I did shuffle a little bit and see all right we're going to take these two. Oh, turns out there's three I'm very curious to see what's here Queen of Cups judgment and yeah the four of Pentacles holding on yeah again I don't know what to make of this but there is for some reason cancer it has come up in my mind that and I think this message is for a lady a cancer ascendant cancer moon cancer Sun for a female and it is to say that there's something severely out of balance in your life um, and that you want you want to think carefully uh, and ask for guidance and ask for protection at this time is the message that I think is coming through all right we've got I'll tell you what the cards are Queen of Cups upright judgment upright and the four of pentacles holding on so I'm not quite sure this is I, I knew this was for a lady yeah and it's it's um I have a whole theory about what this is but if you like pick a card I'll be back doing pick a card night of December so come and, and watch pick a card then but um there is something around letting go here for you cancer all right we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, thank you so much for joining. Welcome. Now, on the 4th of December, there is an eclipse happening in your fourth house. So, by the way, I'm just going to turn off my phone. I don't need to have it on anymore. I apologize, Leo. There we go. No disruptions. All right, I'm happy now. So, on the 4th of December, there is an eclipse happening in your fourth house. This can create changes at home. Or in your relationship with your mother as well um, I've got the note here comfort even a, yeah even a touch of your romantic life Venus Lord of your Rahu is in the fifth house so the areas that we're looking at we are looking at home we're looking at relationship with mother we're looking at comfort we are even looking at your romantic life a little bit okay because Rahu uh, 
is on the other side of the eclipse there and the Lord of Rahu is in the fifth. So there's a touch of romance as well for you, Leo, that's being looked at. This is a time where you are going to feel very sensitive and your heart, your metaphorical heart, okay, the heart that loves is, is I think, going to feel um, quite sensitive. Emotions are going to run a little bit high here, Leo. So be careful around this eclipse time is what I want to say. Now Jupiter for the next few months is going to be in Aquarius in your seventh house. Oh, this is brilliant. Good on you, Leo. I'm super happy for you. This is a great transit. So you're going to be able to focus on work. If you are in a committed relationship, if you are married or you're in a business partnership or anything like that, that should be going really well. So Jupiter is here to make life even better for you over the next few months. Great, great transit. So really enjoy Jupiter's energy. Uh, he's, he's here to expand. Even expand things like well, expand your business if you're self-employed expand your social media following your public any of that expand you know foreign money coming in or more customers or something like that it's really good really good transit now on the 9th of December Venus moves into Capricorn and that's in your sixth house so this is not the greatest time for love this month for you yeah a little bit like cancer um, it's, it's not ideal. However, it is great energy for your work. Okay, so if you are more work focused, that's going to be good at this time. But better transits for love are coming. Okay, so just hang in there. Now, full moon. On the 19th of December, there is a full moon in Gemini, Mrigshira Nakshatra in your 11th house. So this is a really great time to reflect on all the wishes you've ever had. Okay, and which ones have come true. And it's a really good time to recognize that the life you are living now is actually the life that you wished for some years ago. Okay, so if you pretend to be a younger version of you, and sometimes this works, it, it works if, if you have, I guess, progressed into doing something that you want to be doing. I mean, how far do you need to go back? to see that you're actually living you know your dream life sometimes you might have to go back quite a bit but i've got the note here great time to recognize that the life you are living now is the one that you have wished for in the past okay if that's not true then reflect on this that the life you are now leading is one that others wish for okay so you might be in a country that you know, and I mean, all countries are struggling and suffering right now. I know this is, this is difficult to do. But for example, I mean, I, I always feel so grateful to be an Aussie, you know, because so many people try to emigrate here, but they can't. People lose their lives trying to come here. So I feel always very extremely grateful that I am here. Even though I know right now a lot of people are not grateful because yeah i know they're big problems i understand but like in the big scheme of things what you can do on this 19th of december full moon is look for the parts of your life where things have gone well and you have achieved what it is that you once wished for and and things like you know, being, being a citizen of a country that, you know, people in the past um, lost their lives trying to get there and, and things like that, you know. For example, if you're born and, and live in India, you know, that's an incredibly auspicious birth that so many spiritual people say. That's why it's so populated because everybody spiritually when we're on that other side everybody wants an Indian incarnation I've heard this from you know reputed uh, Western channelers and, and you know people who aren't Indian so who aren't biased you know they say that if you get an Indian incarnation it's extremely fortunate when you look at the afterlife okay so that's the kind of reflecting that I'm suggesting you need to do here on the 19th 
look at those big picture views and take a look at what you can be very, very grateful for in the now. That's going to be a good thing, Leo. All right, so we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I just want to check on the time. We're doing okay. Good. All right, so on the 4th of December, there is an eclipse happening in your third house. So this can create changes in your friendship circles or your professional networks or your social media networks. Okay, there can be some change that happens here. I've got the note here, you'll also want to be careful with your speech during this time. Be really careful with your words and especially don't speak any harsh words to anyone at this time. If you have to, just maybe hold your tongue for a little bit, like oh, just, just wait for the fourth to clear, okay? <laughs> if you, because hopefully you're watching this before the fourth and hopefully you'll be able to avoid uh, anything too confrontational or argumentative on the fourth, that would be a really good thing. That's with people at work or your friends in particular. Now Jupiter, for the next few months, Jupiter will be in Aquarius and for you that's happening in your sixth house. So this is not the best transit for Jupiter. If you're feeling tired or unwell, be sure to rest, okay, because wherever Jupiter goes, he tends to expand things. And this is a house where illness does happen, okay? So be extra careful with your health. Don't overwork yourself. This is also a place where there's debt, where there's competition. Remember Jupiter's coming through and expanding these things. So just be careful with any of these things. Don't spend too much and certainly don't get yourself into any more debt. Um, you know, if this is a time where you are trying to clear debt, go easy on yourself, recognize that you know, that there may be better transits um, where that will happen. We've got Venus on the 9th of December. Venus moves into Capricorn in your fifth house. So this is beautiful. This is, this is where there's some good news. Venus is always the bringer of, well, just about always the bringer of good news. Uh, you can enjoy Venusian energy, enjoy creativity, enjoy time with your sweetheart, enjoy time with your children. You have great love energy here, so make the most of this. That's beautiful. Now there's a full moon on the 19th of December, Gemini Mrikshira Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your 10th house. So you may see a big work project complete at this time. Maybe something in regards to your career is going to culminate. Maybe there's going to be a recognition that I've done enough on this plane and I need to get a promotion or you know I need to change my career. You know, maybe you want to, maybe you need a bigger mountain to climb or something, you know. Um, yeah, something's gonna complete or culminate at this time. It's not a great time for you to start work projects. Okay, so if there's some amazing work project that you want to start, maybe just wait until after the 19th of December. All right, we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, thank you so much for joining. So on the 4th of December, there is an eclipse happening in your second house. This is the solar eclipse. And I've got the note here, look for an impact in your family, your family relations, your family life, or something to do with your savings and wealth. You might experience headaches at this time, so just be careful about that. Mars is in your first house, so your health could be, health-wise you could feel a bit drained or under pressure. There could be some feeling of pressure or drained or tired, so look out for that. Take care in your relationship with your mother and especially how you speak to her, okay? Now Jupiter over the next few months is going to move into Aquarius in your fifth house. So this is an excellent transit for you. This is fantastic. This is a great time to fire up your creativity. This is even a great time for love and romance. This is beautiful. So this is really nice energy for you here. It's a time to expand who you are in the world. This is a time to express your true self. This is a time to let yourself shine, you know, to, to be that leader that you are to step up, to be seen, to do. This is, this is great for all of that. Venus, 
9th of December moves into Capricorn and this is in your fourth house. So, you know, things should be good when it comes to work with that Jupiter energy there. And with your home life, things are beautiful. Okay, so that month, uh, the entire month of December, you'll be able to enjoy the comforts of home, of being with family, of cooking delicious foods. You know, we've got Christmas, we've got all this time with our loved ones. So this is beautiful energy. So I expect you're going to have a really good time there, Libra. Great time to redecorate your house as well, if that's something that that you want to do, that you feel inspired to do. Now, on the 19th of December, we have a full moon in Gemini, Mrigsha and Nakshatra that's happening in your ninth house. So something is culminating in regards to your inner authority. Look back and see how more in charge of your life you are now than ever before. Okay, and if you feel like, well, I could do better, you know, I could take more charge of my life, you know, that would be good to recognize that at this time. And you might complete on something on the 19th of December in regards to your work, or it could be something to do with your studies or learning. If you are a student, if you're doing a degree, you might find that something culminates and completes on the 19th of December. So Libra, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So there is a big solar eclipse happening on the 4th of December. This is happening in your first house. Oh wow, this is, this is all about you. <laughs> this is, you're going to be getting quite a bit of, um, yeah, this, this is for you. This is all about you, Scorpio. So look at that. Big changes can occur in any area of your life. Fantastic. We've got wild card energy possibly touching any and every area of your life. Look at that. So I've got the note here, how you see yourself can also change at this time. Maybe you're going to learn and discover something really deep and profound about yourself, about who you are. Maybe you're going to recognize something about, gosh, I used to see myself like this, but I'm actually like this. You know, this could be something like that happens. And I've got the note here, ideally, you're, you know, something, something improves for the better. So you, you're going to fly out of this time. Something about the phoenix rising, you know, there's something like that, that kind of energy here for you. I've got the note here, believe in yourself, allow only the best in your life and pray that anything that's not right for you gets scared and goes away. You know, go big, go home, uh, go, go home. No, is it? What is that Texan phrase? You either go big or go home. Yeah, it is that. So what you want in your life is you want only the best joining you for the future, okay? If it's not good enough, if it's not honest, if it's not courageous, if it doesn't go big or go home, no, make it go home, right? <laughs> you, don't, you don't have time to entertain that. This is, this is big energy for you, Scorpio. This is really quite massive. See what happens, okay? And I, one of the things I'm going to be, how I'm going to be handling the eclipse, I'm just going to not do much at all. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm going to do my work. So, you know, if you booked with me, I, I will, well, I'll have more time to devote to you, but I'm kind of, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be, be quite still at this time if I can. Jupiter, for the next few months, Jupiter in Aquarius uh, is going to be in your fourth house. Jupiter in Aquarius is going to be in your fourth house. So what have I got here for the next few months? Aquarius, fourth house, Jupiter. Yeah, this is a mixed transit. You know, you'd think that Jupiter would do great here, but it can be up and down. So there's going to be some things to look forward to. Your earnings could be good. But I've got the note here, be careful in property dealings. Also, your relationship with mother may be more in focus. This is a little bit like when Saturn is in the fourth as well, Saturn dire period. Like it's mixed, you know. Um, so observe that one, see how that goes for you. The 9th of December, Venus moves into Capricorn in your third house. So this is a really nice time to socialize. This is beautiful. It's a great time for singles. If you want to meet someone new, 
maybe you know the universe will put some some lovely person on your path now that's quite possible for you here because we've got Saturn in the same house and Venus is going to be there in the third this is amazing this could materialize someone special so look out for that Scorpio that's beautiful on the 19th of December there is a full moon in Gemini Mriksha and Nakshatra in your eighth house something is culminating in regards to your lover your family or your extended family so something might come to completion so there might be something that I'm not seeing like an end or anything no this is a beautiful full moon where something just comes to a fullness this is a lovely full moon. The only thing about this full moon is that you might be a bit mentally restless. That's the only thing I'm seeing. I've also got the note here, perhaps some matter will come to a conclusion regarding shared assets. Yeah, that's possible at this time. But overall, Scorpio, it's looking like a pretty good month for you. All right, now we are gonna welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I do see that you're in your last phase of Sadi Sati here, I hope. You're going strong. Hang in there. You're doing amazing. But as for the eclipse, that's happening on the 4th of December in your 12th house. Ooh, I am so excited for you, Sagittarius. I remember writing the notes for you and I was just like, I love this. I love this so much. I wish this was me. Okay, this is an incredible time for you to receive psychic insights, downloads, information from the other side you could gain past life information at this time okay keep a pen and a paper by your bed write down your dreams keep a little notepad as you go around to write down ideas if you're a creative person if you're a writer you're an artist you're any of these things you might get an idea just out of nowhere yeah i'm loving this energy for you so keep a pen and paper write down your dreams but write down your ideas okay little insights might occur to you i always get my insights in the shower and that's annoying because i can't have a pen and paper there but i always make sure that when you know when i come out of the shower i just get straight to my room and i write stuff down because i don't know what it is about the water falling on my head but like and this doesn't happen in the bath when i have a bath it doesn't happen but yeah it's a shower thing. There are a lot of people who are like this. There are some companies where they actually they encourage you to just take a shower in the middle of the day because you know ideas come for some people. But um, you're gonna have you're kind of you got good energy, Sagittarius, to get some good stuff. Now Jupiter for the next few months, Jupiter is gonna be in Aquarius in your third house. This is not the best transit for Jupiter. Not the best time for socializing. There can be obstacles in your business or you know maybe you're putting effort towards something and you just ugh, you keep finding obstacles or it's slow or it's something I don't know it's not ideal transit your spending might go up as well there is the possibility for a short spiritual trip or retreat or something like that so if you're in a part of the world where that makes sense and you can safely do that that could be a good thing We've got Venus, 9th December, Venus moves into Capricorn in your second house. So if there's been something you wanna buy, this is, the, this is the shopping transit. I always tell people, if you've got spare money and you wanna buy something beautiful, you can do it. You can do it this month, Sagittarius, and it's Christmas. Why don't you treat yourself to something special and beautiful? Uh, I've got the note here, if you have the means, splash out on something new. We do have Saturn in the house as well, so he won't let you go too crazy on the spending, so that's good. Uh, great time for you know good food and family and friends and all that kind of thing. So enjoy this Venus transit. Now we've got a full moon on the 19th of December, Gemini, Mriksha and Nakshatra, that's happening in your seventh house. So perhaps a work project completes Perhaps something comes full circle, maybe in relation to your public. If you, you know, have a social media platform or something like that, or there's going to be something that completes or comes to a fullness, and it's in regards to work, could be to do with your marriage, your business as well, your public, if you have a public following. But it's looking like a nice month, Sagittarius. And, 
Yeah, you guys are in this last phase of Sati Sati, aren't you? Did I touch on that? I think I did. I think I said something like hang in there, didn't I? Just, yeah, keep, keep on keeping on, Sagittarius. You got, you know, some of the big transits that are coming for you, they're going to be amazing. Right, especially your next Saturn transit, that's going to be really good. So hang out there for that. That's 2023. All right, well, Capricorn, Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, on the 4th of December, there's a total solar eclipse happening in your 11th house. So this is going to put the focus on how you bring opportunities into your life. Okay, how you network, how, how you magnetize those big opportunities. It can be wealth as well. Wealth can be a focus here. I've got the note here, hold good intentions that anything blocking you from attracting the right opportunities into your life, if it's blocking you, hope that it gets eclipsed out, okay? Um, or that you're going to be jumped forward on your manifestation path. All right. We do have a bit of wild card energy here, Capricorn. So just observe and see the effects. It could also affect your relationship with your sibling, older sibling, but it could also be friends, networks, that kind of thing. There could be some changes in, in, in those areas. Now, Jupiter. For the next few months, we've got Jupiter in Aquarius in your second house. Oh, beautiful. I'm so happy for you, Capricorn. You need good news and you've got some right here. The next few months, Jupiter is your friend. Not only is he your friend, he is just going to help you so much, I hope. Um, there can be the potential for you to acquire more wealth and savings. You could even expand your family, okay, if that's something that, you know, is... is part of your path going forward your health can pick up okay you might feel more energetic this is also a transit where you might feel a little bit more psychic and your healing energy might go up your ability to heal yourself and even other people could uh, improve with this transit and definitely yeah you being a bit more psychic you being more tapped in you being more in tune you got a few months of this, so make the most of this beautiful transit. I'm so happy for you, Capricorn, because I know you're in the height of Sati Sati and it's not the best time right now, but Jupiter is your friend. I'm telling you, you are one of the lucky ones getting a great transit here. Now, Venus on the 9th of December moves into Capricorn, and this is in your first house. Beautiful. So this is a great time you to work out if that's something you do i'm not really a gym person but i do a bit of yoga in the garden now and then so but if you do the whole working out thing it's a great time for that um, this is a great time for you to possibly change something about your appearance if you want to maybe you want to radically change your hair or your look or do something different you want to innovate with with something to do with beauty and, and yourself and your looks it's a really nice energy for singles as well okay so if you're single and you want to meet someone and if you're able to get out and about who knows you might meet someone special now full moon uh, is happening on the 19th of december gemini mrikshya and nakshatra in the sixth house so something is going to complete at work I'm not particularly seeing anything being cut out as such. It's not an eclipse, it's just a full moon energy. So some culmination, there's some completion. And I get the feeling that this could be a feeling of a satisfaction of a job well done. Or, you know, and I mean, look, at work, a lot of projects, I, even I said at the start of this video, didn't I? I said that I've got the feeling that it's like the last day of school. I have that vibe and, I, you know, I didn't like do too much talk about the news or any of that like yeah I didn't because I'm just a bit lazy but <laughs> the thing is there's going to be some natural completions and culminations because this is the 19th of December people are wrapping up for the year anyway so that's kind of you don't have to be a Capricorn to experience that but I, I kind of feel like there, there will be some something will just naturally complete work-wise at this time and I think it's going to have a a good feel to it as well Capricorn so thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome 
Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm going to check on the time. Good, we're good for time. And my hair is okay. It's not doing that annoying thing. Okay, good. <laughs> we're good to go. I might even take a sip of water because I haven't had one for a little while. And you're Aquarius. You don't mind. So what do we have going on here? We have got 4th of December. We've got a total solar eclipse happening in your 10th house. My goodness, Aquarius. This is about your work, okay? So you can expect changes at work. You might be jumped forward on your path, okay? Uh, and that's what I'm wishing for you. Hold that energy, hold that thought in your mind if you feel like you have been off track in some way, okay? Hope that you're put firmly on your path and, and jumped forward if possible. Because I think a lot of people have felt delayed or held back over the last couple of days. That's natural, that's a given. We, you know, Saturn and Pluto, this heavy Capricorn energy. I mean, it's put the brakes on everybody's life. Okay, but I do feel like you're probably feeling this quite a lot because especially if you are an Aquarius moon, you will be in your first phase of Sarisati. So you might be feeling that you know gosh you're, you're putting in all your energy but you're not going forward I think pray for it, that you be jumped forward uh, at this time I've also got the note here for you if you can arrange work in such a way that you do a little bit less at this time I kind of feel like you shouldn't be exerting yourself at work at this time that's not going to be good for you okay so if you can cut back your workload this is a really good time to do that, Aquarius. Now for the next few months, you're going to have Jupiter in Aquarius in your first house. Okay. Uh, is this good energy? Yeah, it's not the best energy. It's good. It's great for your spirituality. If you want to grow spiritually, this is lovely energy. But this is not the best energy for your, your health. You might feel a little bit run down. You might feel a bit tired, actually. I also have the note here that you might notice that you have some more fears at this time. Okay, you might find that you're more anxious, or that yeah, fears are coming up, and you're like, "Well, where did this come from? I wasn't afraid of that before, but now you're starting to feel that." I've got the note here: counter any fears, of course, with your spiritual work and your spiritual studies, spiritual techniques, tools, all that kind of thing. Now, Venus is going to move into Capricorn on the 9th of December and that's in your 12th house she's going to be there the whole month oh this is beautiful for love oh this is great good on you Aquarius you need some good energy I remember saying to you last week I not last month I think I said to you something like you got you you're on the start of a beautiful stretch when it comes to love yes you are this is great okay so I've got the note here as well though we ha yeah we have been looking at the 12th house and I did that video about fantasy and mathematics and all that so I've got the note here be careful not to get too carried away keep both feet on the ground when it comes to love as well we've got Saturn in the house okay so you have to be practical yeah be dreamy and you know maybe get swept away a little bit but uh, remember that we live earthly lives and there are practical things too all right, so now there's a full moon happening on the 19th of December. This is Gemini, Mriksha, and Nakshatra. This is happening in your fifth house. So something's going to complete in relation to your creativity. Could be in relation to romance. Could be in relation to your children. Okay, so feel the fullness of what it is that you've been experiencing over the last little while, I think. You know yeah and this could be this is interesting something's going to culminate something's going to complete for you Aquarius see how you go with that and and definitely spend this time to see how far you've come okay and we are now going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining I'll just check the time we're okay, thank goodness. Right, what have we got going on? We have got a solar eclipse happening on the 4th of December. This is happening for you in your ninth 
house. So there can be changes at work, definitely with this. There can be changes, let's say you're doing a PhD or something like that, you know, your studies or your academic life. Uh, there could be some changes or something happens there, I'm not sure, but these are the kind of areas that we're looking at anyway. I've got the note here, there is the potential for you to power up, okay? so that you can have a clearer path, so that you can lead, so that your leadership qualities can really shine through. Hopefully with this eclipse, yes, we've got an eclipse, maybe some old limiting beliefs are gonna be eclipsed out. Maybe you're gonna feel freer to express yourself, to lead, to take charge more, which would be amazing. There is also this thing about you potentially being jumped forward and that would be for you in regards to your career, okay? Or your education or your learning or your skills. This could also be to do with gurus as well, mentors. If you teach, this could impact that as well, this eclipse, okay? Now, Jupiter, we've got Jupiter. He's going to be in Aquarius for the next few months, and that's happening in your 12th house so this could be because this isn't a few months it's really interesting because i was watching i don't know if anyone watches bracca goldsmith but i was watching her she's just come into my mind because she talked about how for a few months she was in new zealand but then she went back to greece and that was really interesting to me because it was just a duration of a few months and i mean could be this transit so you, you've got this transit of a few months Jupiter and Aquarius in your 12th house. Could it be that you spend time somewhere in another location, for example? Uh, this could also manifest in a way that you're more isolated at this time. So maybe, you know, you're working in a busy office, but then you have to work in an isolated lab or something, or, you know, there's, there's something about some change, maybe you being isolated or you having more to do with having something more to do with a faraway place okay it could manifest like that expenses could go up at this time but this is a good time to spend money on your spirituality so if there are workshops or teachers that you want to work with something like that you know it's a good transit for that it's a great time for your spirituality to expand it's a great time for you to indulge in all those books and lectures and workshops maybe that you haven't had the time for. So also a good time for finding new spiritual teachers and just really taking them in or taking in channelers or I've been enjoying so many different channelers and all their content and yeah, I mean, maybe you might find some really amazing teachers or gurus or guides or even channelers at this time. If we have a look at Venus, Venus on the 9th of December, she moves into Capricorn in your 11th house. This is a great transit for socializing, great for time with friends. You may even manifest someone you would like to go out with. Isn't that amazing? So it's a lovely time, Pisces. You got Saturn in the house. So you could really, you could manifest somebody special. Okay, so this, this love interest of yours, Saturn's there. He can materialize a person for you. Like, it's possible. Now, there's a full moon happening on the 19th of December in Gemini, Muksha and Nakshatra. That's happening in your fourth house. So something could culminate in regards to your home life. Perhaps you complete a home project. Maybe you've been doing some renovations. Maybe you've been sorting something out. Maybe you've been cleaning up a spare room and finally, you know, you, you get that done. Or maybe you're just indulging, you know, on the 19th of December. You're really experiencing this, the comforts of home. You know, something like that. But Pisces, I think this is going to be a nice month for you. I think, you know, there are some potential changes ahead. But I don't know if that bird's going to come up on the microphone. Wow, you got quite a song there from one of the birds. Gosh, I hope that, I hope you can hear that. It was so beautiful. We've got a camera battery flashing like crazy. So 
I'm just going to leave it there, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you next time.